Uh, hello, everyone. Today we shall take a, a look at other conditions that can present like psoriasis. I am Dr. Abraham from A and E Dermatology Specialist. So starting with uh, uh, this uh, uh, group, the parasoriasis, which has both the small plaque and the small plaque parasoriasis, we shall look at these other conditions that can mimic or have a psoriasis form pattern uh, that can be a little bit more challenging when, you, when it comes to diagnosis. So starting with um, uh, starting with the small plaque parasoriasis. So small plaque parasoriasis also carries other names. It has been named uh, varially depending on the literature that you're reading, but it can also call, be called the parasoriasis N placus, or you can call it the chronic superficial dermatitis. In some literature, they call it the digitate dermatitis, and it can also be called the xanthoerythrodermia pastans. So now this uh, uh, small plaque parasoriasis, it was described together with the large plaque parasoriasis by Brock in the 1902. And uh, he's the one who tried to uh, distinguish the different entities uh, between psoriasis, uh, lichen planus, the parasoriasis, and how they, inter they interconnect to give us this group of disorders, the ones we call the papillary squamous disorders. So, uh, Small plaque parasoriasis commonly affects uh, middle-aged individuals, but can also be seen in elderly. Uh, it can occur in children, though rarely, uh, with a male predominancy, whereby the male to female ratio is about 3 to 1, and it peaks in the fifth decade. So the small plaque parasoriasis, the exact cause still is not known. Uh, however, it has been associated with chronotisol infiltration and uh, proliferation, and it also carries a risk of developing cancer. About 20% of the cases can develop the cutaneous T-cell lymphoma uh, over a course of about five years. In the clinical picture, though the name says plaque. Uh, in the clinical picture, we actually see patches rather than the plaques. And in this case, someone present with a chronic asymptomatic, mildly pruritic, or sometimes uh, uh, no itch at all. Uh, patches that are less than five centimeters in diameter, which are usually covered with a very, very fine scale. So it has this uh, waxing and whining uh, that, uh, that sometimes it is a, a little bit more visible, some other times a little bit faint, and some other time the person can be uh, completely asymptomatic without anything on the on the skin. Uh, over time, the disease history uh, it resolves uh, spontaneously over years, and uh, it will go without even leaving hyper or hypopigmentation. And it loves to be on the trunk and the extremities. And later on, it can favor the sun exposed, uh, the sun protected areas, including the trunk, uh, including the lower limbs, uh, including the gluteal areas. So it loves the sun covered uh, areas more. So when you look at uh, this picture, you will see that in this case, the individual had patches uh, with a fine scale on the trunk. And this is how small plaque parasoriasis will look like. So the wording has plaque in it, but in actual sense, they are patches, which are, uh, are fine skeletal. In some literature, the difference between a patch and a plaque is really minimal. And uh, some people say a patch is uh, just a thin plaque. So uh, you, that one should not confuse you. So when, when you continue this, another picture, which shows um, another individual with a addicted type of a, a small uh, plaque a parasoriasis. In this case, it, it defies the uh, definition of being less than five centimeters in diameter. So the addicted variant can be even more, more than five centimeters in diameter, 10, 20, whatever. So that one should also be noted. So when you look at uh, this other picture, this is the annular type. This is how it looks like. In case uh, you are confused, this is how it will look like. And it will be easy, easy for you to confuse, you confuse it with other uh, papillary squamous disorders like pituasis rosea, uh, pituasis vascular, because they also give patches with a, a silver scale. Even secondary syphilis can give you a similar picture. So continuing further, the variants that we talked about in this case, uh, some literature, 
they write about the, the anthrodermia pastans. So in this case, it's a type of small plaque parasitosis, but it comes with a yellow hue and, and easily seen in patients who have uh, a fair skin, a fizz, uh, a, a fizz Patrick skin type, maybe one, two, up to around three. And then the other variant is the dictated type that usually presents with elongated finger-like patches, uh, oftentimes on the on the franks, and uh, this can be more than five centimeters in diameter. And this is our list of differentials, pituitis rosea, drug eruption, uh, pituitis like noides, uh, even psoriasis, mycosis fungoides, secondary syphilis, and pneumonia dermatitis. So uh, the pathology, if you take off a sample in this case, you, the, the, the pathology findings may be a little bit non-specific, uh, ranging from things like focal parakeratosis in some areas with a few uh, exocytosis of lymphocytes, but uh, really it, it, the histology is usually non-specific. And the main, main reason why you take off this hist histology is to distinguish it from the bad type, the mycosis fungoides, which also has a patch stage. So we take off this biopsies to make sure that it is not mycosis fungoides, uh, which uh, may be giving their uh, consequences. So continuing further, this is how the histology will look like. We see this lymphocytic infiltrate, which is a little bit mild and with uh, some form of dermo, uh, slight uh, spongiosis in the dermis, but the epidermis may be looking a little bit normal uh, or sometimes may be thinned out. So this is how the pictures look like. You've already seen this one. This is the, uh, the annular type. This is the dictated type. And um, when we are treating small plaque parasitosis, uh, usually uh, the treatment, we, we, uh, the first line, we can use emollients, like a mouse fine ointment. We can use the, even topical corticosteroids. And you can also use uh, uh, phototherapy where you can either use uh, poa pova, that is suralin uh, uh, with the UVA, or you can use narrowband UBV. You can also give characteristic agents like urea, salicylic acid. But in case someone fails, you can go to the second line where we use the tropical nitrogen masters like camustin. Camustin, we usually use it in treatment of mycosis fungoides. But in this case, if you have persistent small plaque parasitosis, you can also use it in trying to treat. So proceeding to large plaque parasitosis, in this case, it is also called retiform parasitosis, but some literature also call it the parakeratosis variegator or variegate parakeratosis. And the story is just similar to what we've seen earlier uh, in small plaque parasitosis. And still its pathology is not yet known, but it is also characterized by superficial cutaneous infiltrate with T cells, especially the CD4 cells. And uh, most of most often times, some of the cases up to 35%, they can convert into the overt mycosis fungoides. Uh, that is over a course of, of about uh, six years. So these are the cases that once you make a diagnosis of either small plaque or large plaque parasitosis, you need to follow up these patients to make sure they don't uh, develop uh, mycosis fungoides. So still here in the clinical picture, we shall see in the clinical picture, we shall see a dermatous uh, round irregular shaped scaly plaques, which are over five centimeters in diameter and may or may have a, may or may not have a triad of atrophy, telangiectasia, and then also hyper or hypo pigmentation. So in, the, in, in, in this case, we have also variants of a large plaque, which can either be rated from parasitosis or the parakeratosis variegata. In this case, someone will have widespread ill-defined patches with a neat like pattern or zebra stripe pattern. And usually they can end up in a MF or mycosis fungoides. The treatment is similar, the one as we give in small plaque parasitosis. But what is important is that you have to take off a biopsy and make sure it is not mycosis fungoides. And uh, if you look at its uh, clinical picture, you'll see these large, uh, thin uh, uh, plaques, or what you call patches, which are scaly, and uh, they will be ill-defined. Even a close-up, you'll see that you can't get a, a clear border where the rush or where the eruption stops. So these ill-defined borders with the large uh, patches, which are scaly, uh, can lead to a, a suspicion of um, large plaque, parasitosis. And in the same picture, we also see it in a... MF at uh, the patch stage.
So uh, this is a picture of an African skin. So this is how it will look like. You see that the borders cannot be clearly defined out as we see the well-defined borders like in psoriasis. In this case, the border is a little bit diffuse. You can't, you can't see where the, 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 the eruption is, is stopping. Uh, and on histology, still we shall see a superficial dermal inflammatory infiltrate predominantly having lymphocytes. As you can see here, the skin looks a little bit normal, the epidermis looks normal, but you can see this lymph uh, lymphocytic infiltrate that, uh, that uh, with minimal uh, spongiotic uh, processes. Thank you for watching this section. Uh, see you in the next section where we're discussing other conditions that can look like uh, psoriasis.